Hi, and welcome to another video in fluid mechanics. Up until this point, everything has been in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z, and u, v, w. But other coordinate systems do exist, and we regularly make use of them in fluid mechanics. Take three examples, river flow, pipe flow, and a planetary flow like planet Earth. Each situation have different needs, and the axis of symmetry can be taken advantage of with other coordinate systems. Although at first it may feel like it's overcomplicating things, there are times when other coordinate systems help in analysis. There are three main types of coordinate systems, Cartesian, and two polar coordinate systems, cylindrical and spherical. The point of a coordinate system is to define the location of a point in three-dimensional space with three parameters. In Cartesian, we use x, y, z as three distances from an origin. The corresponding velocity components are u, v, and w. In cylindrical, we use r, theta, and x, where r and x are distances from an origin, and theta is an angle with respect to a plane. These are most useful in pipe flows and have velocity components u sub r, u sub theta, and u sub x. Note, sometimes people use u sub z instead of x here. It depends on the convention of the group you're working with. In spherical coordinates, you have one distance r and two angles from two planes, theta and gamma. These are most useful in spherical flows, like planetary flows, and have velocity components u sub r, u sub theta, and u sub gamma. All three of these can be used to define a point's location in three-dimensional space. In practice, Cartesian is by far the most common, cylindrical is the next most common, and spherical is fairly rare. We will avoid the math headache that comes with spherical coordinates at all costs. You may be asking, does this change our conservation equations? Yep, it sure does. But it's more complicated than just changing x, y, z to x, r, theta. Similarly, we cannot just change out the velocity components. The change in coordinates changes the form of the conservation equations themselves. To show this, consider a fluid element in two coordinate systems, Cartesian and cylindrical. You might recall we used the fluid element many videos ago deriving the conservation equations. Our fluid element has a shape and three dimensions. In Cartesian, our fluid element is a cube with side lengths of delta x, delta y, and delta z. In cylindrical, the fluid element takes on a different shape with two linear sides, delta x and delta r, and a third arc. On the bottom, the arc length is r delta theta, but on the top, it's r plus delta r delta theta. If in Cartesian coordinates we had a tube, in cylindrical coordinates we have a bread loaf. Notice that the top and bottom of our shape have slightly different arc lengths, and thus that means they have slightly different areas. This is going to make things a bit messy. To see how cylindrical coordinates changes the equations, Let's take a look at a simple example of 1D mass flow rate balance for an incompressible fluid. Mass flow rate is density times velocity times area. We'll divide through by volume because in fluids we like to think of things in terms of per unit volume. Here, m dot in must be m dot out. So, velocity times area must equal velocity times area out per unit volume. You may remember from our derivations of conservation of mass how this goes for Cartesian coordinates. Consider flow in the y direction. We define the area in and the area out, which are the same for our cube. And the volume is just a product of delta x, delta y, and delta z. Plug these into the equations above, defining that the velocity out minus velocity in must be delta velocity gives us dv dy equals zero. This is one of the main terms in conservation of mass, and it's how we de derive conservation of mass for Cartesian coordinates. 
In cylindrical, things are a bit harder. Consider flow in the radial direction r. The area out is r plus delta r times delta theta and delta x. The area in is r delta r times delta theta times delta x. Slightly smaller. The volume is estimated as r delta theta delta r delta x. Notice here that I messed up when writing these out and I use z instead of r. These two are quite commonly interchanged in cylindrical coordinates depending on the convention. While I did define it as x up above, I think it's important to leave in this mistake because it exposes one of the major flaws in fluid mechanics, inconsistent conventions. You always need to be thinking about the physical source of a variable, not just its label. Okay, let's plug these relationships into the above equation. You might recognize that r delta u plus u delta r is the same as the delta of the product of r and u. This is the reverse of the product rule you learned in calculus. With this relationship, we get a gradient term that is slightly more complicated than Cartesian, but it is a main term in the conservation of mass for cylindrical coordinates like we'll see below. This added complication is because our area in is not the same as our area out. Comparing the two, Cartesian versus cylindrical, it's clear that although they look similar, there are important differences we need to keep track of. The equations take a slightly different form, and most importantly, we cannot simply change y to r. Now, I'm going to save both you and me a headache of rederiving the conservation equations and cylindrical coordinates. It's more of an exercise in mathematics, and here I think we have a good understanding of why they are different, which to me is most important. Below are the conservation equations laid out in full. Note, I pasted the equations from another source because my handwriting's a bit sloppy and I wanted you to see the terms clearly at least one time. It also means I conveniently don't have to write them down. Some important things to note here. First, we cannot use u, v, and w as the velocity components like in Cartesian. We need to move to a subscript notation where the subscript denotes the direction of the velocity. Second, you start to see odd things in front of the derivatives, or terms that aren't as simple as they were for their Cartesian counterpart. This gets even worse with spherical coordinates. Third, each momentum equation is slightly different. No more copying and pasting three skeletons and filling in the blanks like we did for Cartesian coordinates. We need to make sure that we use the right direction equation for the right application. Lastly, from this source, the body force term is assumed to be gravity, so the body force acceleration is labeled with a G. I prefer to use the letter A for a generic body acceleration. We will use these equations moving forward when analyzing pipe flows. And with this, we now have a better understanding that there are other major coordinate systems all with their own purpose and that they definitely change the equations. And that's it. Let's quickly review. We started by realizing there are three primary coordinate systems, Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical, and they each have different applications. Each coordinate system has slightly different equation forms, as we saw with a simple 1D mass flow rate conservation exercise. And now we have a different set of equations in our tool belt, the incompressible cylindrical conservation equations. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.